Hi, and welcome back to the Race Coordinator Race Configuration Tutorials. Um, this is yet another part of the series going through every property in the Race, race Coordinator Race Configuration. Um, there's a lot of stuff, and we've gone through a lot so far. We're coming to the end, but there's just a few more things to talk about. Um, just to remind you, for those who haven't paid attention, who haven't haven't viewed the previous tutorials. Um, this tutorial will talk about these properties at a higher level, at a high level. We're not going to set up any particular race or any particular format. We're just going to go through the formats uh, or the properties as they are in the race wizard in that order, um, and just talk about them and explain what they are and how they work at a high level, um, so that you get a good feel for you know the, the huge amount of things that you can do within race coordinator with a race. Um, uh, so, uh, I've got a brain block here. Yeah, so, you know, in future tutorials we'll talk about, um, we're going to talk about actual race formats and race configurations specific to what you would want. So we'll set up practice races or round robins or group races, whatever. And then we'll talk about those properties that are involved, um, that are key to those, to those race formats in, in much greater detail than I'm going to here. I'm just going to glance through as fast as I can, um, while still giving you an understanding of what's going on. So... With that said, um, we had just finished the group stuff. I hastily got through a bunch of the group settings, um, but we left off basically where we started the team support. So race coordinator has a very rudimentary concept of team racing. Um, it is very, very basic right now. It was put in um, really quickly on a user's request as an experiment, if nothing else. Um, it really could use some feedback and whatnot, but it's in there right now, and here's so, and it does excuse me, it does work, there's just not really a lot behind it right now in Race Coordinator. So, um, there are only two properties right now that you can configure for teams. You can turn on teams, first off. If you don't turn the teams on, um, the other property or other properties, as they will be, as there will be, um, won't have any effect on the system at all, the race at all. But if you do turn on teams and all the other properties are activated and whatever their settings are will control the team formatting. So, Right now, team format obviously defaults off. If I turn that on, then the next property, which is the team count, will be useful. Currently, since I have turned off, this property is technically not you know, used, so it doesn't matter what the value is, but I'm going to talk about it anyways, and that's the team count. Um, you can specify how many teams you have in a race. Now, um, uh, it's an interesting concept here. Uh, again, it's not fully thought out, but um, right now you specify the maximum number of teams you can have in a race. So... Um, you can specify it as two, like here, and what that'll do is divide all the drivers up evenly between the two teams um, in, in whatever way, theoretically, later on will be configurable, which it's not right now, and I'll, um, I'll talk in a second about how they get put into teams, but uh, um, so you can set this up to any value you want. You can have two teams, three teams, four teams. You know, if you know you have 20 drivers and you want two drivers on a team, you can set up 10 teams, and then everybody, every team will have two. This is where it gets to, to be where we need more properties to flush this out more and stuff, but again, it... It got the basic idea of what the user had requested done, and it got done quickly, and it was just an experiment more than anything. So um, so currently, the way the team uh, placement works is that it's done just like the balance se uh, seeds in uh, the grouping. Um, so you, you can't control it, but it will do balancing. So, for example, if you say team count of two, all of the odd drivers will be on team one, uh, seated drivers will be in team one, and all of the even seated drivers will be in team two, because it will put, you know, It'll balance out the seeds so that there's an even distribution of the of the driver seating in the two teams. Um, there's minimal support for teaming right now. It really doesn't affect anything currently in the race except that there is a team leaderboard right now, which will take the team uh, the team totals and and show those instead of just the individual drivers total. So you can so currently the only thing you can do is and it doesn't affect seating whatsoever or anything. Everything else runs the same way. It's really just there to show you that. Uh, Race coordinator is keeping track of team stuff, and you can do it. Um, again, at some point, we'll flush out exactly how we want this and what we want in it. If you're a team racer and you're interested in it, feel free to contact us and let us know. We'll work with you to get it the way you want it. Um, again, this was just an experiment, but it's in there, and it, and it does work. It's just very, very basic right now. Um, so that's it for the group setup stuff. Um, we're going to move on to the audio setup stuff now um, and talk about this stuff. Um, <clears throat> So the audio, the uh, the start prefix is an interesting one. This is um, this controls the audio that plays during the start lamp sequence. And so, what you do is you specify a prefix for the wave files. Um, you've seen prefixes before um, for um, the practice race uh, callouts. Um, if you were looking at those other tutorials, this is the same exact concept. 
um, you specify the prefix, for example, in this case we've specified um, a path name and then woman underscore, which means, as you can see in the description here, um, what it will do is it will find for each start lamp in the, in the sequence woman underscore five, for example, for the fifth one. Um, if there is a woman underscore five dot weighed, it will play that. Um, race coordinator comes defaulted with these, and, and in fact, woman underscore five is a woman saying five. Um, it will also look for four, three, two, one, etc., um, and play them if they exist as the start lamps come on. So in the start sequence, you'll notice it actually counts out five, four, three, two, one. That's because race coordinator provides all of these things. Now the zero is the zero time or the green light time. Uh, green flag time, and in, in race coordinator, it's not recorded as a woman saying zero, it's, a, it's recorded as a woman saying go, and that indicates that the race is, you know, it's a green flag and it's time to go. So, that's it. Um, you can change this to anything you want, as long as, you know, you, you can have some of these or all of these. If, if you get rid of woman underscore four, it, what, what you would hear is five, it would not play the four sound, and then it would play the three, then the two, then the one, then the zero. So you don't have to have all of these. You can start at three if you want, you can start at one if you want, you can have all of them, none of them whatever. Um, there are two actual start sequences that uh, Race Coordinator comes with. One of them actually says um, start your engines and what that one does is it starts out at like um, something like a 10 second uh, start lamp sequence. Um, the first five are actually hidden but at like time 10 so there's like a woman underscore 10 dot wave it actually says start your engines rather than 10 and so that's how you can you can simulate any kind of start sequence you want by doing things like that. Um, it's really quite flexible, and any user can do any of this they want. Um, race Coordinator, again, provides those two formats. And, of course, Race Coordinator provides both the man and woman, the male and female sounds for these things you can choose. It just defaults to the woman because I thought they sounded better. Oh, excuse me. Um, so moving on, um, the false start audio, again, is just the sound that plays when uh, when you, if you have the hot, uh, the, the track power on when you start the race. Um, you, you know, you fall start, it'll play that sound specifically. Um, nothing special there, but you can, you know, change this to whatever you want. You can create your own wave file, you can use whatever we've provided. Excuse me, on install, you can do whatever you want. Yellow flag is exactly what it sounds like. Again, if the, uh, if during heat, um, somebody hits a track call button, whether it's the uh, race director or, you know, whoever, wherever those call buttons are, or in the menu for the race day screen, you hit, uh, the race director says, you know, um, race director pause. That will pause the race. It'll go yellow flag, um, and you'll. This will be the audio cue that plays again. If you don't want to, just leave these sounds. Any of these sounds, um, if you don't want them, just leave them blank, um, and they just won't play. Heat over. Big surprise is the exact thing you'd think it is. It is when the heat ends. Um, you get a heat over sound. Um, that's it. Again, again, we default this to the the actual words heat over. Um, big surprise. Nothing hugely creative there. Again, you can you know do whatever you want with that sound. Um, race over is the same thing with heat over, only it only plays once and that's on the last heat. When the last heat ends, it does not play the heat over sound, it actually plays the race over sound instead because the race is over. Um, all of them customizable, you can drop in any wave file you want, put them in your own directory, name them whatever you want, and select them here or in the management screens and, and change your race to use whatever sounds you want. Um, it's really 100% you know, customizable, do whatever you like. Um, I'm going to stop, well, let's do the image. I'm going to skip the interface setup for now, and I'm going to go to the image setup because these are quick as well, and I'm running out of time. So um, the, uh, the three start light uh, images are the images that play in sequence during the start sequence. So the start light off is what, where the, what they are on when no time is, like if it's the fifth one, and you're at seven seconds, it'll be in this state. Or the first one and you're at five seconds, it'll be in this state. So in this case, it's a dark red. Um, it looks off. It could be a transparent image, and not even there at all. It could be whatever you want, but that's the first one it plays. Then once the time goes to that amount of time, so the fifth one on the five second, the one on the one second, it switches to this image. Um, and you can see here it's a dark red. Now this could be yellow. That might be more, you know, more what you're used to, whatever. We went with a, just a, a bright red. And then when... When you get to zero, they all go to the start light go color, which is green in this case, and so they'll all go to the green. Um, pretty simple. Um, and that composes your start sequence in, the, in um, when a race starts or when a race restarts. It's the same thing. Um, they use them both. Um, the flag images are all just for, depending on the race state, you got your red flag, your yellow flag, your green flag, your white flag, and your checkered flag, and that's it. So um, I'm pretty much out of time, but these all show up again during the race day screen based on the, the, the state of the heat. Um, thanks, and we'll be back.